This tutorial will guide you through the installation process of a load sensing G6 wireless data logging system. What you're about to see are the steps for a typical installation right out of the box. At the end, you'll have a full featured secure wireless data logging system. While the system has many different configuration options to fit different needs, the default options should be suitable for the majority of cases. The system architecture is as follows. The sensors are installed and connected to the data loggers. Each data logger may be connected to one or more sensors, depending on the models. The data loggers are easily configured on the field using a smartphone app. The data loggers send their readings over the long-range radio link to a gateway. The gateway is responsible for receiving, processing and storing the data from the sensors. Up to a thousand data loggers can send data to the same gateway. The gateway can be connected to your local private network or to the public internet. You can then gain remote access to your gateway from the network and integrate the gateway's data into your own systems. The first step on a deployment is to install the gateway. The gateway should be installed as high as possible. The supplied mount allows wall or pole mounting. Open the gateway using a flathead screwdriver. The gateway needs to be powered. It's possible to use PoE or DC power. The gateway also needs to be connected to a network if we're going to be accessing it remotely. It's possible to use an Ethernet connection or the integrated GPRS 3G modem. In this case, we will be using a 3G network connection. Put the SIM in the corresponding slot. Connect the antenna Close the gateway's enclosure. And connect the power adapter. In this case, we will be using the supplied AC adapter to power the gateway using PoE. The adapter's light switches from orange to green when the gateway is being powered. With the gateway working, it's now time to deploy each of the data loggers on site. We assume here that the sensors we are going to read are already installed. Open the data logger's enclosure. Insert the battery for the clock. This battery will keep the clock running if the main batteries are removed or dead. Insert the main batteries. Between one and four batteries may be used, depending on how many sensors we'll be reading how often we'll be reading them, and how long do we need the batteries to last. Set the power source to batteries. Mount the antenna. Connect the sensors cables. Each sensor type has its own wiring scheme. Check your sensors manual for the right wiring. Close the data logger's enclosure and tighten the screws. Connect the grounding cable. Tighten the cable glands. Open the USB connector and connect the data logger to the smartphone using the USB on-the-go cable. When launching the app on an initialized data logger, we get a warning that the data logger's clock is not set and a prompt to synchronize it with the smartphone which we accept. This is the data logger's status page. It tells us some data about the data logger itself. The setup wizard will guide us through the configuration process, so let's launch it. First thing we need to tell it is the size of the network. How many data loggers will there be in this installation? Now we have to configure the sensors. 
This screen is specific to each data logger model, as different sensor types have different configuration parameters. In this case, we have a vibrating wire sensor, so we'll set the vibrating wire parameters as well as the sampling rate. We want the data logger to take a reading every five minutes. Once the sensor configuration is done, the data logger will take a test reading. This way, we get to check that the readings are within the expected range. Now we know the sensor is correctly installed, correctly wired to the data logger and correctly configured, we don't want to step forward until everything checks out. Next step is to connect the data logger to the gateway using the long range radio. We turn the radio on and select the correct region and country. The radio network is identified by an ID and protected by a password. These values need to match those on the gateway. A random password is generated for every gateway shipped, so you can use securely the default password provided, as we'll do now. The advanced parameters should be left at their default values. Now, all that's left is to check for correct communication between the gateway and the data logger. The coverage test involves the data logger sending some test packets using different modulations to the gateway. Then, the smartphone will connect to the gateway using the internet connection and check how many of these test packets were received. The GPS position of the smartphone is also reported and stored on the gateway and it's used to elaborate a coverage map. For the online test to work, both the gateway and the smartphone need a working internet connection. An offline test option is available in case it's not possible to perform an online test. In order to perform the test, we need to enter the gateway's serial number and remote access password. This is the password used to access the gateway from the internet. It's separate from the radio network password, but it's initially set to the same value to avoid confusion. Once the test is done, the results will give us a measure of the quality of the connection between the gateway and the data logger. The token ID is the number which identifies this test. The spreading factors are different modulations the data logger can use. On normal operation, the optimal spreading factor will be automatically negotiated with the gateway. A coverage test is considered successful if at least half the packets can be delivered in any spreading factor. In this case, the coverage is perfect in all modulations. The installation and configuration of the data logger is finished. And we can now leave the installation site knowing that everything is correctly configured and tested. The data logger also has its own internal memory and a copy of the readings is kept on the data logger as well as on the gateway. It's possible to download the readings to your smartphone in CSV format using the D-Log app and the USB cable. Since the gateway is connected to the internet, we can remotely access it using the web address on the products information sheet. The same interface is available on the local network. We use the remote access password to gain access to the gateway. The first thing we see is the list of networks. The gateways usually have a single network. Inside the network, we get a list of the data loggers in it. In this case, there's only one. On the network level, we can check the results of the coverage tests, including the offline tests, and we can also download the data from all the sensors in the network on a single CSV file. If we click on a data logger, we get to the data logger's information page. The data loggers are identified by their serial number, but we can input a human-readable name to help us manage the network. These are the last readings received from the data logger. And here's where we can download past data sent by the data logger in CSV format. The first thing we need to do is to input the engineering units. These are the formulae which will convert the readings from the sensors from their raw readings to the units the sensor is reading. Since this is a vibrating wire sensor, we have several formulae to convert the hertz to other variables, depending on the sensor type. Same with the thermistor. We can use the engineering units to transfer the ohms to degrees Celsius.
Once this is set, we see the kilopascals derives from the frequency, as well as the degrees from the thermistor. This part is specific to each data logger type. In addition to the connected sensors, the vibrating wire data loggers have an integrated barometer for pressure compensation. The gateway itself is configurable from the configuration panel. Here's where the gateway's network connection is configured. This checkbox is the network watchdog. The gateway will monitor the internet connection and will reboot itself after 40 minutes of unsuccessful internet connection attempts. We need to disable this whenever the gateway will be installed without an internet connection. We can choose how the gateway will connect to the internet. The default option is auto detection, which means the gateway will use an ethernet connection if one is connected during gateway boot up and will use 3G otherwise. We can override this detection by manually selecting which connection to use as well as set a static Ethernet IP if we need to. Whenever the gateway's configuration is changed, the changes will be applied on the next reboot. On the radio section, we can change the radio network's country, ID and password. Remember, these need to match those on the data loggers. On the remote access section, we can change the password used to access the gateway's web interface through the network. Another very useful feature is the FTP client. The FTP client will have the gateway periodically upload its files to our FTP server. We just need to enter the FTP server's address and access credentials as well as the file we want uploaded and where they should be uploaded. As you can see, the load sensing G6 system combines ease of use with reliability and flexibility making it useful for a wide variety of applications. Be sure to check the manual for further information regarding the system's configuration and features.